Hey YouTube, today I'm going to do a fun little comparison here and I'm going to compare two very modern 357 Magnum revolvers and both of them are considered higher end revolvers. Now, before we go any further, I'm going to show you that neither one of these revolvers have anything in them and we are clear to make this video. So what we have here is we have one of the modern Colt Pythons, and this is chambered in 357 Magnum. And this one here happens to be a four and a quarter inch one. Now, these things got a lot of slack when they came out. All people talked about was that they were junk because they weren't the old Colt Pythons. Well, the old Colt Python was introduced in 1955 and they were um, an instant hit. It was a hand fit premium revolver um, fit together by the best gunsmiths in the world. And they, um, they were very expensive, but you got what you paid for folks. It was just hand fit together, had the smoothest action in the world. Well, fast forward, you know, 50, 75 years, whatever it's been. And, um, technology has caught up with us and people have moved on from the revolver um, scene and all that and colt wasn't selling a lot of them they stopped making revolvers altogether in 1999 besides the single action army and we know that one folks well as soon as they stopped making them and the show the walking dead came out everybody started crying that they wanted to make the colt python again and Colt has figured out, and I didn't think they were ever going to be able to, they figured out how to make one of these and make it affordable to the um, American public. Now, I always said if they took one of these guns and they did all the handwork they did back in the earlier ones, and today's labor rate and inflation, that gun would cost $4,000 and nobody would buy it. Well, Colt proved me wrong because they took this gun here and there's absolutely no hand fitting done on this gun and it is put together by all CNC machining, machine work and, you know, assembled in a factory and they've done it for a fraction of what I thought it would cost. They cut the labor down by using the CNC machines and all that. Now, some of the differences in it is... The hammer is a little bit different, the trigger is a little bit different shape, but what everybody was wondering is how is the action going to feel and how is the trigger going to feel. This is a bone stock gun. I've had this for several years now. I got them when they first came out. I changed the grips on it to these finger groove grips. These are the old style elite grips and I put my own little marking on them here from my favorite movie Pulp Fiction. But it's got finger grooves on them and they're smooth and they're very comfortable to shoot. Now, how is the action on it? Well, folks, they knocked it out of the park because this action is so smooth. They actually duplicated that old cold action. Now, what they did is they simplified the inside of this gun because an older vintage python was very complicated on the inside. It was a very complicated action. It took like a very special person to know how to work on it. They simplified all that and they still duplicated that very smooth action. And the single action trigger on this thing is very good and the double action is absolutely good. It is smooth all the way through on this gun. Now, when it first came out, they had a couple people had an issue with the side plate screws being loose or something, but all that got resolved, and what you need to know is this gun is a bargain for what you get. The way this thing operates, the way this thing looks, if you look at the edge of these cylinders, how it's all finished off perfectly, there's nothing been done to this gun. Folks, I've shot it quite a bit. Here's the actual markings on them it looks just like the older ones it's a little bit different but it looks just like the older ones on the other side it has the the colt marking here that just says colt it's just it's very subtle differences in this one and the old one and i actually think the single action or i'm sorry the double action on this is actually smoother than the older ones now it has adjustable sights has a red ramp up front uh, it's got a recessed and crown barrel, which the older ones did not have that. It has an easily removable and replaceable front sight with the Allen key. The back sight on this one has been changed to a Wilson Combat because the actual sights that came on these, in my opinion, are terrible. And that's the only no-go on these. So I put a Wilson Combat sight on this thing, and man, is it awesome. 
it's all serrated it's very positive the clicks on it for the adjustments and what a fantastic gun the, the hammer spur is a little bit smaller than the original one and it's serrated instead of knurled but as you can see i have large hands my hammer my thumb reaches that fine and pulls that buttery smooth action back as with all colts it rotates to the right and it locks up very tight cylinder opens up the same you pull on it and just everything is just really finished off very well folks you cannot complain at all about these here's your forcing cone on it and everything just looks awesome the the gap between the forcing cone and the cylinder is pretty much non-existent and just what an awesome gun now we're going to compare that to a modern court revolver and this is a court mongoose 357 magnum made by court a german revolver maker and they are distributed by nighthawk customs if you look at the other side it says nighthawk berryville arkansas and this resembles a lot of a colt python but it is not folks it is a german made court revolver and court started in 1955 by a gentleman named willie court and he wanted to build the ultimate revolver and he did accomplish that folks and a lot of people say that this thing looks just like a colt python because of this ventilated rib and this full underlug well, if you look at them side by side, they do have very similar profiles, but they operate completely different. This has like what they call a ball system in it. And a lot of people ask what this is. That's actually the cylinder release. You push up on that and that's how you get the cylinder to come out. On this side, it has a little ball right here that you can push on a button and pull the cylinder out and you can change it over to a nine millimeter cylinder if you want. Look at the machining done on this thing and you'll see everything is machined and finished off to perfection. Push the button back in and just insert the cylinder back in and it's back in business. The side markings on this has a little button that says court on it. It has just very smooth real wood grips on them that say court on them and they have a finger groove on them. Very similar to the ones that's on my Colt Python here. I love that finger groove feel on a revolver. The trigger's finished off very nice, so is the hammer. It's got serrations on the top. It's got adjustable sights for windage and elevation. It has a 14 karat gold bead <laughs> as a front sight, but that ain't something from a little bit of money. Now, this is where things start getting different. This also has a um, reverse crown and recessed barrel, but this barrel is a two-piece barrel. And what it is, is this barrel, fits all the way into the frame and this whole outer section is kind of like a sleeve that goes over it and it's integrated into that sleeve is all one piece where this ventilated rib and this full underlug goes and when you open this cylinder up and look at this forcing cone you can just see how perfectly it's finished off folks i mean it is awesome it's just a piece of art the way they put these things together one man has about 70 to 80 hours in building one of these things and the route that Colt decided to go with these new Pythons is they mass produce them on CNC machines and they still turn out a really nice gun, folks. I have nothing bad to say about them. Now, as far as the front barrels here, there's where you see a little bit of the money difference here. They both have crowned and recessed barrels, but as you can see, the Colt's going to be a little bit fancier than the Colt. I mean, it's not a lot fancier, but it just looks a little bit more like a little bit more money and time went into the labor on them because it did and that reflects in the retail price on them now which one do i think is better well if you want to go by craftsmanship and everything i mean the court's got to take it i mean just the amount of work and time and hand fitting and they produce you know a couple hundred of these a year and they produce as many of these as they can sell so I would say in craftsmanship, the court's going to be a little bit better than the, the current Colt Python. And we're talking about the new Colt Pythons, not the old ones. Now, which one do I think shoots better? Folks, if you're going to buy this court revolver here on the bottom and think that just by buying this, you're going to shoot so much better than you did with this Colt Python, you are sadly mistaken. 
you're not going to shoot any better. This is a perfectly accurate gun, and this gun is more accurate than I will ever be and most of the people watching this video. So if you want to buy this Colt revolver just to be more accurate, you might want to save your money and buy the Colt. But if you want to buy this because nobody else has one and you want something that's crafted by the top quality people in the world and the top quality materials and hand-picked and all that, it's worth buying, folks, and they are expensive. This this Colt here, I think you can buy about two, two to two and a half of these for what you can buy one of these for. That's the price difference. And do you really feel that much difference in the quality of the action? To be honest, folks, I think this Colt feels a little bit smoother when you pull it back. If you can hear, I'm gonna be quiet. You hear nothing. No clumping or anything. Let's listen to this one. It's, it's a little bit more clumpy. It's smooth, and I mean, it works on that ball system, but it's, it's just a different kind of feel to it. But the double action on it is smooth all the way through, but it's different. It's just, I'm, I'm not going to say it's worse. It's different. This Colt is smooth all the way through. Just an absolute dream to shoot. But... I think the court's worth the money. I personally do because I like high quality stuff and I like well built stuff. But if you're, if you absolutely are not in the financial situation to buy one of these, but you can get one of these, you're not losing much by buying one of these new Colt Pythons. I, to be fair, I've compared this to one of the older vintage Colt Pythons that I had that probably cost about the same if you were to buy it in today's times with today's market as next to one of these and it's a pretty close it's pretty close they're they're they both have their own um, advantages and disadvantages in every way but I figured this would be a more fair um, comparison since both of these were very modern and made in today's times and there's a significant price difference in these two but anyway, folks, let me know what y'all think about this. I know these these new pythons get a lot of bashing going on, but you've heard me say nothing but good things, and I'll never lie to you, folks. I, I'll tell you if something's bad, and I'll tell you if something's good, and these things are awesome. But let me know which one y'all prefer. I mean, a lot, Not a lot of people have heard of the court. You have to be pretty deep in the firearms or hear of one of these high-end revolvers like this, but... Anyway, folks, thank you very much for watching my video today, and you folks have a great day.